Hi everyone! In this video I'm going to tell you literally everything about wireless setup of Epson Workforce Pro WF3820. In the end of this video you will be able to connect any device using different connection methods uh, and troubleshoot any connection problem. So let's get into it. To enter the printer's network settings you just need to stay on the home screen and tap on this Wi-Fi icon at the top and choose whether you want to connect your printer to a shared Wi-Fi network or enable Wi-Fi direct. Let's start by choosing recommended option first and tap on start setup over here. I'll start with my favorite method, the one that always works. There are other methods that claim to be faster and easier, but with my extensive printer setup experience, I know they often fail. You just press a button and wait to see if it works, and in the end you're just wasting time and getting frustrated. Of course, I will show you the other methods later, but let's begin with the one that guarantees 100% success. And this is Wi-Fi Setup Wizard, so let's tap on that and the printer is searching for your router. Make sure your router is broadcasting Wi-Fi, if it is it will show up in this list, if it doesn't just tap on search again. So select your Wi-Fi network name, uh, keep in mind this printer can detect only 2.4 GHz networks or dual band networks like this one. So tap on your network name and enter your Wi-Fi password in this field. Then hit OK, start it up, and the printer is connecting to your wireless rotor. Setup complete, that's it. Now just press the home icon and you can add the printer to any gadget. To set up on a smartphone, either iOS or Android device, you need to install Epson Smart Panel application. Let's open it, agree to the terms and conditions, OK on the next screen. And before moving on to the next step, make sure your smartphone is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your printer. This time you can use 5 GHz band, the point is to be connected to the same Wi-Fi router or mesh system. Now you need to give some permissions to this application, so tap on Next, allow to use your location while using App, and Next, allow to find devices on local networks. So allow this, and your printer is found right away, tap on that. And connection is complete, hit OK, you just select the interface of your application, tiles or cards, I prefer tiles. And that's it, the printer is connected to your smartphone and you can print and scan from this application or from any other third-party application that uh, has the same features. For example, if you want to print an email, uh, you can go to Gmail for example, select any letter, tap on three dots, print all. And I won't walk you through the settings, but uh, the key point here is select your printer over here. So your printer should always be selected if you want to print something, that's it. To connect your printer to a Windows PC, open the Start menu, then click on Settings. In this search bar, start typing printers. From this drop-down, select Printers and Scanners. Make sure your computer is connected to the same Wi-Fi network as your printer and click on Add Device. It may take up to uh, two minutes to detect your printer. Also, I recommend you to wake up the printer's display if it's sleeping. Well, your printer is found and you need to click on Add Device next to its model name. And now you see a message on the printer's display and you need to tap on approve and just wait for a while. So now the printer is connected and to do the same thing on Mac computer just go to printers and scanner settings and click on add printer scanner or fax. Sometimes system fails to detect your printer, in this case try to restart your computer and refresh the search a couple of times. In other case you can add a device manually, just wait for this option to appear, click on that and select add a printer using an IP address or host name, then click next. In this drop down select TCP slash IP device, then on your printer's display stay on the home screen and swipe all the way left, then select settings, general settings, network settings and network status. Now select wired LAN slash Wi-Fi status and scroll down a little bit, here is your IP address. So type this IP address in the second field 
it duplicates in the third field, but this is exactly what you need. Then click Next, and you need to install the printer driver. So select Epson and find your model in this window. It's WF3820 series. Then hit Next once again. And if you see this window, select Use the driver that is currently installed, which is recommended. So click on Next. You can rename your printer right away. Next, uh, select location for your printer and add comment, but this is optional. So you can just ignore this, click on next and print a test page or just finish setup. The next step on any computer is driver and software installation because you pretty much want to use the latest driver version. So what you need is open a web browser and Google search for drivers for your printer model. Uh, then open Epson support website, wait for loading and accept or reject cookies. And then in this drop down, select your operating system, Windows or Mac, uh, Windows 11 in my case, then click go. The page refreshes and scroll down a little bit. And for Windows, you need to install drivers and utilities combo package installer and for Mac they have different application it's named a software updater so uh, download the application and once downloaded click on that yes in this window And actually, this application is pretty self-explaining. You just need to follow the instruction on your screen and setup is very easy because actually your printer is already connected to your computer and all you need is, is just install some software. So click on OK on the welcome screen, next accept the terms and conditions, uncheck these checkboxes if you don't want to send information to Epson or you can agree to optional uh, conditions and click next. Make sure the printer is turned on, you don't have to wake up the display, just click next. So now it's checking the system environment, whatever it means. I think it's searching for your printer because uh, on the next screen, your printer uh, will be found and you need just to select it and continue. And the next step is software installation. Actually, you can uncheck all checkboxes if you're sure that you don't need this software, uh, except required software of course but i recommend you epson scan smart if you don't have your favorite scanning application try this one some features are missing but for beginners it's pretty good uh, so once done just click on install So now it's trying to initialize the inks, but uh, for now I don't have cartridges in my printer, so I, I'm skipping this step. And now you're all set, you can print test page or just click next and finish setup. The whole process may take up to 10 minutes depending on your internet speed. If, if you have fast network, maybe about four to five minutes. So finally, your product is ready to use. Click on finish. And uh, the printing rules on a computer are the same as, um, as on smartphone. You just need to select a file you wish to print and find the print feature in the application. Here is your printing dialog. And first you make sure uh, that your printer is selected here, then adjust your settings and click on print. Uh, to scan, you need to use the scanning application that was just installed. Uh, so let's go to start menu, find Epson 
scan smart. Uh, I don't recommend Epson scan too because the interface is not user friendly. Epson scan smart much much better. So uh, if you need to adjust your scanning settings, uh, go here and explore this menu. Uh, and to scan, just click on this style or use another scanning application. Maybe you need some advanced features like markup, like um, adding text. You can download scanning application from Microsoft Store or use paid professional tools like Adobe Acrobat and so on. Now let's keep exploring the different connection methods, but before I will show you how to reset Wi-Fi settings on your printer. This might be helpful if you have some connection issues. So what you need is swipe all the way left on the home screen, tap on settings, scroll all the way down, restore default settings and network settings. Tap on yes and go back to the home screen and wait for the Wi-Fi indicators turns gray and this uh, red I can disappear. That's it. Now let's go to Wi-Fi settings again. Tap on the upper icon, start it up. And also you can connect this printer using WPS feature. Uh, to do this, tap here, start it up. And now within two minutes, you need to take your Wi-Fi router and press WPS button on its body. Just do it once and just wait for a while, for about one minute. Once you see that setup is complete, go back to the home screen and wait for the indicators turn blue and the further steps on your devices are the same like in previous method. Another connection method, let's go back to that menu, start setup, tap on others, is pin code protected WPS. To use this method, you need to access your router's web interface or do it in native smartphone application. Anyway, you need to find WPS feature. Of course, these settings vary uh, depending on your router's model, but they all look pretty much the same. You need just go somewhere to advanced tab, find wireless, find WPS and switch to ping. Uh, then on your printer's display, tap on ping code setup, start setup and enter these pin codes in the web interface or, or application. And then click connect and wait for the result. Well, setup complete. And guys, there is no difference uh, between push button WPS and pin code protected WPS. So if you have push button options, um, always use push button. And back to other Wi-Fi connection methods, the last method is Wi-Fi Auto Connect. Uh, so tap on that and before starting setup on your computer, launch Epson installer. You already know where to download it. And on this step, select connect via Wi-Fi automatically. Then click next. Please wait, it's downloading something. Uh, in this window, just click next. And now you can tap on start setup. Click next one more time. Next, you already know about these steps. And next. So your screen should look like this. This is exactly what we have on our printer's display. And just wait for a while. So now the printer is connected and the further steps are the same. So let me interrupt this part. And finally, let me show you how to turn on and manage Wi-Fi direct. You can use this connection method if you don't have the internet access. So tap on Wi-Fi direct icon and just start setup. Now select your operating system. If you are running an iOS device, tap on that and just scan this QR code to connect your phone directly. Also, you can tap on other OS devices and see your Wi-Fi network name and password. If you tap on next, you can see more information about your direct connection, like model name, device name and IP address. This is most important to me because you can use this address to access your printer's web interface from a web browser. Uh, now let's just tap complete. The Wi-Fi direct feature is enabled. And now on any smartphone or computer, just go to Wi-Fi settings and connect to your printer's network. If you don't see the printer's network in 
this list just refresh your Wi-Fi disable it and enable back again then find your printer tap on that enter password and join that's it and now on smartphones finish setup in Epson smart application just like we did before and on computers you need to connect to the internet to install drivers or install drivers from a CD that was in the box and you can use direct connection on PC or Mac also when Wi-Fi direct is enabled you can tap on its icon one more time start setup and now you have change option let's tap on that you can change network name and password in this case your devices will be disconnected from the printer and you need to connect once again also you can disable Wi-Fi direct and restore default settings that's it well, now you can officially call yourself an Epson printer wireless connection expert. I hope this video was helpful. If yes, consider to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button to support us. Any questions, comment below and see you in the next videos. Be awesome. Bye guys.